Now it's doing. It takes little time. Yeah, yeah. Oh, you can start off. Okay. Yeah. Now you're live. Yeah, it sounds like. Share your screen. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Now you're live. Yeah. Okay. Now we can see that. Yeah. We are live. Okay. So, good evening, everybody. Start putting your slides on. Uh, welcome to the Silver Jubilee Year of Indian Arthroplasty Association. That is uh, one. Uh, now we started this association in 1995 and this year is 2020. So being the silver jubilee year that we have started uh, some webinars in view of the current prevailing pandemic that is COVID-19. We, we started our first webinar last week and this is the second webinar and this is devoted to total hip replacement in ankylosed hips. I urge you to go through our website that is www.indianarthroplastyassociation.com and uh, go through it and you can give your suggestions at this email ID that is indianarthroplasty at gmail.com or directly to me at and, uh, Dr. S.S. Mahanti at hotmail.com. Your now we improve our need to improve our membership. I urge all of you to join the Indian Orthoplasty Association as a life member. Those who are members, they can update their address, contact number, and email ID. And in addition to our webinar, we are starting a e newsletter as well. So I request all of you to contribute towards the e newsletter in the form of some articles or case reports, etc. As I told you earlier, we have uh, shifted our conference. We have postponed our annual conference by one year to next year, 2021. And that is to be held at Coimbatore and we'll soon declare our dates for the next year conference. Now the second webinar is on, you know, total hip replacement in ankylosed hips and none other than Dr. Vijay Bose from Chennai will be the convener for this webinar. And we are privileged and uh, to have Dr. Rami Shurial from Sydney, Australia, though it's uh, his, uh, you know, sleeping time, but he has been kind enough to join us in this webinar and uh, give the guest lecture as well as, uh, you know, share our cases and uh, share the discussion with us. Now, without wasting any time, I uh, hand over it to Vijay. Now, Vijay, this is all yours. Uh, thanks, uh, Dr. Mohanty. Uh, so this will be a second webinar on, uh, this will be on the ankylosed hip. Uh, so the first we'll have a guest lecture by, uh, 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 by Professor Rami Sorail from Sydney. Uh, Professor uh, Sorail has been the driving force between the APAS. APAS has been the, you know, the, the Arthropas Association for the uh, ASPA countries. And he's been the driving force who has been taking it around for so many years. And he has visited India many times. And it's really a pleasure and honor to have Rami with us here today, although pretty late in Sydney, it's over 9.30. So thanks again, Rami, for uh, joining today. Pleasure. And uh, we'll now go to your guest lecture. Thanks very much. He has visited India many times. And it's really a pleasure and honor to have Rami with us here today. Uh, Rami, you can share your screen, yeah. Thanks, Vijay, and say, thanks, Shubranshu, uh, for the invitation. Uh, 25 years, it's quite an achievement for the IAA. My, I congratulate you on your Silver Jubilee anniversary. It's a pity that we can't be there in person to celebrate together with a good whiskey at this time of night. That would go down well. 
Um, before I start the presentation, which I've been asked to do, I want to have a big shout out to a lot of colleagues who I know in India. I know you guys are doing it tough um, with the COVID-19 situation. Uh, it's a difficult time for everybody globally. Uh, fortunately, we seem to flatten the curve here and we're just getting out of lockdown. But I feel for all my colleagues who are still stuck at home and uh, doing just the trauma as it comes in. Hang in there, guys. It's an anxious time for everyone, but uh, you will get through this and look forward to better days ahead together. So I've been asked to speak on takedown fusion total hip arthroplasty. And I'm going to set my presentation really to look at some of the basic features of how to manage these particular patients and use a couple of examples of patients that I've operated on uh, just to talk about the critical aspects of preparation and surgical intervention. And then that hopefully will lead on to the case discussion and the presentations from the local faculty. And I look forward to some of the vast experience that's certainly available in the panel we have with us today. So let's start by taking a look at why we fuse in the first place. This is a surgical fusion as opposed to those that obviously naturally fuse as a consequence of certain pathologies. So let's recall hip arthrodesis in young patients. If it is done well, it can certainly relieve pain, allow a very active lifestyle, including manual labor, and facilitate later conversion to total hip arthroplasty when needed particularly if it is done correctly. If it's ex executed well, poor outcomes can be minimized by appropriate patient selection and education, good surgical technique, correct hip positioning, 20 degrees of flexion, neutral abduction, adduction, five degrees of external rotation. And you can vary that flexion from 20 to 30 degrees, depending on whether the patient will be a manual laborer or whether they will be seated in a sedentary position for their occupational life. And an acceptable leg length discrepancy of no more than two centimeters of shortening. Because once you get beyond that, it is hard to correct when taken down, converted to a total hip arthroplasty. So what are the downsides of fusion? The patient and the surgeon perception is certainly quite different and that it is inferior to total hip arthroplasty. So as a consequence of that, Whilst an arthrodesis, a formal arthrodesis, was a procedure that was looked upon as a salvage of a hip in younger patients, um, certainly two, three decades ago, these days it is a rarely used procedure and thus the skill set of converting a formal arthrodesis to total hip is certainly decreasing because of the volume of work that is presented to us. The other perspective for the patient is there's an altered gait pattern, although they can still walk long distances. There's no difficulties with childbirth, some impairment of sexual activity, and it is hard to put on shoes, socks, cut your toenails, etc. But formally, published studies have demonstrated the risk to the contralateral hip. 22.5% have progression of osteoarthritis in the other hip joint a definite risk to the ipsilateral knee with 65% developing osteoarthritis, plus or minus rotary instability over the subsequent 10 to 20 years. But the biggest risk is to the lumbar spine with 61% developing back pain as, as published by Sponsola. So therefore, the three main indications for conversion to total hip arthroplasty is a patient who's finally had enough of their stiff hip, even though there's no pain in the groin, no pain in the thigh, but they present to you with low back pain or ipsilateral knee pain or contralateral hip pain or a combination of those three clinical presentations. So I like to present one case, which is a 25 year old female with left hip arthrodesis performed at the age of 12 post Perth A's bilaterally and she had the procedure done on the left side and the hardware has subsequently been removed. She presented to me at the age of 25 with significant ongoing back pain for three to four years, becoming more disabling. She'd already done her research. She was having in 